My name is David Reyes, head butcher at the Wise Ox. Today we're gonna to be breaking down a whole lamb from Superior Farms in Northern California. So the first step to breaking down a lamb is gonna be removing the neck. So we have a nice place for the next step, which is splitting the legs apart. The first step is tracing the outline before I hit it with the saw. Next step is separating the belly from the rest of the animal. We separate the belly from the rest of the animal to expose the end of the loin. And that is where we separate the legs from the rest of the animal. Next step is separating the two bottom rounds. Now you got two legs and your two top sirloins. Now we just clean up the spine so we can see what areas we're gonna hit next. Next section is the lamb saddle. This is where you get your uh, lamb loin chops. They look like little T-bones and porterhouses. So we look for the furthest joint from the last rib and go all the way up to protect the integrity of the whole belly. Next step is removing the loin from the rest of the animal. Next step is removing the shoulder from the rib area. In the rib area, you're gonna get the rack of lamb and your lamb spare ribs. Uh, next step is splitting the spine right down the middle to separate the two rack of lambs and the two lamb spare ribs. Next step is uh, splitting the rest of the spine and the neck so we can remove the shoulder the two four shanks. Next step is uh, cutting the rest of the spine down through the tail to separate the two legs. Next step is removing the tender one so I can make a really nice lamb, boneless lamb saddle roast. It's essentially a boneless T-bone or porterhouse roast. This is the spine that's being removed from the lamb saddle so we can get a really great boneless roast. Next muscle we're working on is the shoulder. You can get a few cuts out of this. You can get some O-bone chops, some shoulder chops. But what we like to do here is a nice boneless shoulder roast, perfect for smoking or braising or nice something nice in a crock pot. To remove the spine from the lamp, we're gonna open it up just over the blade steak, the terrace major, and the shoulder blade. So we remove the uh, shoulder blade right from the middle of the roast. Now you got a completely boneless roast. We're gonna truss it up. There's seven different muscles just in the shoulder area. So when you smoke it or braise it or uh, slow roast it, you're gonna have different textures, different flavors, uh, different fat contents in every part of the muscle. And that's why we feel this is the best way to attack a lamb shoulder. That is your boneless shoulder roast. Next, we're removing the lamb tenderloin from the leg so we can then remove the top sirloin from the rest of the leg 
and get two separate muscles. The way we feel about the way meat should be consumed, I feel it is much more quality over quantity. You don't need to have meat on your plate seven nights a week. So when you do put meat on your plate, just be more conscious about the decisions you're making and the impact it has. And that's what we try to do. We try to have as little impact on the whole ecosystem as possible while respecting the sacrifice of the animals and treating them how I would want them to be treated. In. Uh, right here, what we're doing is just something purely for aesthetics. It looks great. A nice little Frenching of the end of the leg. Next step is going to be removing the sirloin tip from the inside round in order to debone the leg of lamb. It's really great about whole animal butchery is the animal really tells you where it wants to be cut. There's so many seams, so many creases. And once your knife hits it, it comes through clean and you have bones that look like that. Remove the bone, the femur bone from the middle of the leg. There's four separate muscle groups. So in order to ensure that they cook evenly, we truss it. Today we're gonna to show you how to French a lamb rack. It's important to score the bones along the process. That way when it comes to remove it, there's not much extra work at the end. Next step is scoring each one of the ribs right down the middle. Once you score on either side of the bone, you're gonna flip that rack over and follow the line that you made the whole way. Flat surface can use, obviously not many people have a meat hook at their house. Spoon will work, just use the flat side down. You just wanna push that skin. Going back through and following all the pre-work that we did before, removing that bone skin from the bone, the rest should come off just like that. Using a towel will help you get a little bit of grip and that's perfectly French wrapped. 